Hello, my name is Steve Herman. Welcome to my YouTube channel on mediumship development and mediumship training. I try to at least weekly put out a video or two dealing with spirit communication and how to be a better channel for the spirit world. I teach quite a few courses and workshops on mediumship worldwide, although with the pandemic, I've been doing more stuff on Zoom. However, I find it doesn't matter the location in the world, even the level of experience that the individual might have, the mechanics of spirit communication remain the same. And there, there, there's so many different types of mediumship out there. As students of mediumship, whether you've been doing it for decades or a, sh a short time as a novice, it all involves allowing ourselves to be utilized as instruments for the higher spirits to work through. And it's, it's an ongoing process. Development is gradual, and development should be enthusiastic and exciting for the participant. So you want to be really into this. You put energy into it, I can guarantee you, you're going to get a lot back. I, I'm the author of two different books on spirit communication, mediumistic development. And the first one, which has been out since 2015, it's used worldwide. It's called Mediumship Mastery, the Ultimate Guide to Mechanics of Receiving Spirit Communication which is available on Amazon, and it's used worldwide by quite a few teachers <coughs> who train mediums. The other book which I have, which just came out, it's new, it's called Mediumship Mastery 2, The <coughs> Advanced Techniques That Work. And this is even more in-depth information on developing mediumship. The first one, book only had 84 exercises. This is 175. I'm really into the teaching aspect. Now, in this book, I have three different chapters on physical mediumship. How many of you know what physical mediumship is? You know, we see a lot of people, and I get this all the time when I'm, when I'm teaching and training people. People are into the clairaudience, clairvoyance, clairsentience, mental mediumship. Why is it mental mediumship? Because it involves telepathy. It involves, it utilizes mind-to-mind -mind communication and the intuitive ability of the medium with the higher spirits are able to impress the mind of the medium. But it's a subjective experience. Physical mediumship is different. Physical mediumship is really popular, especially if we go back into the 19th century and even the earlier part of the 20th century. And it involves physical phenomena. You know, the sciences, maybe everything's dark. But, but with physical phenomena, you experience it objectively through your five physical senses. Now, there are some people out there who are experimenting with this who are very genuine. And I've seen some amazing, incredible examples of physical mediumship. I've experienced these things you know, on my own with groups I've run, but just other mediums who work with it who are very dedicated. And, and physical mediumship is dependent on the chemistry of the medium. But there are people out there who, who do this stuff. And it's like, it's, it's, they're kind of like con artists. <laughs> Sometimes people really into mediumship can be incredibly gullible too, which is unfortunate. So what I want to read is a short section of my new book. And this particular chapter is actually on fake mediumship. But the last, we, we have some exercises, of course, at the end, but the last page is titled, the ideal fake physical seance. I think you might find this interesting. Require all attendees to fill out a detailed application form, providing personal details, questions they want to ask the higher spirits, and the names of deceased personalities they wish to contact. Can you imagine filling out an application form before you go to a seance? Make it mandatory for the sitters to include copies of their ID cards or passports with the application. This way, you know their genuine identity and can plan accordingly. How many of you do that when, you, when, you, when you're holding a group? Have people you know, make sure you get, get their ID. Require all attendees to remove their shoes and empty their pockets. Use a metal detector to make sure they have no hidden flashlights, cameras, or other devices on their persons. Yeah, make sure you search them really well. Make a great show of having someone present search the cabinet. Uh, the cabinet is this enclosure, that you, the, generally a physical mediumship that the medium will sit in. So you make a great show of having someone present search the cabinet 
but don't allow anyone to search you. Control the proceedings. Use zip tie elastic handcuffs to secure yourself to the seat. You want to use elastic handcuffs, you know, the zip tie ones, definitely use those things. They're really hard to get out. Okay, so you use, never use metal handcuffs or anything that might actually restrict you. Control where the participants sit. In a genuine sense, it is good to alternate sit sitters by gender and position those who are good batteries in key positions to provide power. But on the flip side, when a phony medium positions sitters, it enables him or her to know where everyone is seated for the phony mediumship that will take place in the session. Play really loud, ear-splitting music at the beginning of the session in between phenomena. Forget boring religious hymns. Upbeat contemporary music is best. Sitters can sing along them. Best of all, the, musically, uh, the music effectively masks the sounds of your movement. I, I have a lot of singing in any kind of seance I run. You know, it really actually does lift up the vibration. But, you know, when they're playing, like, you know, Queen really loud or this just disco really loud or whatever type of music it might be, contemporary pop music or ABBA or something like this, and they play it really, really, really loud, you can't hear the guy rocking around or her walking around. It, it, it's quite interesting because it's all dark. All right. Require everyone to hold hands. Well, this is genuinely useful for building the power in an authentic sense. It also allows you to control the movements of those involved and prevent interference. Yeah, we wouldn't want to be tackled when we're walking around, touching people, pretending to be a spirit, would we? Require everyone. Okay, I'm sorry. Repeat the same performance or variations of it multiple times in multiple locations. Channel deceased celebrities. That's mandatory. Pop stars are the best. They really are the best. I mean, people love it, you know. <laughs> Talk in a funny foreign accent. Make sure you get your facts straight. Make sure that you don't channel Abraham Lincoln with a phony southern accent. So you definitely need to know American history if you're going to bring through historic American figures if you're doing some type of science, physical science session in the States. So these are just some things to think about. And again, this is a page from my book, Mediumship Mastery 2, from the chapter, Fake Mediumship. But I would encourage all of you to keep an open mind. Don't be gullible. Physical phenomena is real. And it can be developed under the right conditions with the right type of dedication. The spirit individuals who work with us, they want to see us develop our mediumship. And they're not into baloney. They're not into phony stuff. So use the powers of discernment and really question things and sincerely strive to be the best possible channel for the spirit world you can be. So please subscribe, smack that subscription button below. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to comment below and ask. And thank you so much. May God bless you.